Hey, it's Meatball. And Mark. And this is the Rocker Morning Show on demand from 1077 RKR. 1077 RKR, it is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. Hey, Mark Frankhouse. What's up, man? How are you? Oh, man. I, like, as you said, almost to the weekend, and yeah. I'm ready for it. Yeah. I uh, After after this morning and uh, last night, too, uh, I, I'm, I'm very ready for the weekend. I had one of those, like... You saw me roll in a little later than usual this morning. I had one of those like catastrophic failures of a morning. Oh no! Where it's like my my first alarm went off and I was in like the deepest of deep sleeps. So like I woke up and thought I was still dreaming. Oh, you know? man. don't you hate that? Yes. So like I didn't think it was real. I was like, nah, I don't need to go to work yet. And then my second alarm went off and I was like, oh, I'm gonna be late today. Yes. Um, well, I had water back, but it was just kind of like m- kind of warm this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was great. I couldn't find anything this morning. Like I, it just, <laughs> it was just one of those. It was one of those like nothing is going to go right this morning. Mm-hmm. I'm actually very lucky uh, that I didn't hit a semi on my way here because Jeez. he was in the left lane. It's foggy outside. His trailer lights weren't working. Oh, that's not good. So I pulled up. I couldn't figure out why everyone was stopping in the left lane and then switching. Like one guy drove into the turn, into the the center lane there on Gull Road. Yeah. Drove past the truck. And I didn't even see him until I was right on top of him. I was like, oh, thank God I'm in this lane. But yeah. I'll I'll tell you what. That makes me happy that I come in here at four o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Because nobody is on the road. But yeah, I, I just had a catastrophic failure of a morning. So I actually feel nice that I'm in the studio. There's knock on, do we have any wood in here I can knock on? Yeah, hold on. That's knock on wood, you know, nice. nothing around me goes crazy here. Last night, uh, I discovered that, uh, do you guys remember when you moved out of your, oh, your couple yeah. apartments ago, you gave me that plant? Yeah, I gave you that plant. That, and, uh, uh, that you actually thought had died because it was just like leaves. It was just vines that, that your partner had thrown yeah. out and they just grew on the ground. And she was like, here, this you can't kill this plant, you know? <laughs> Guess who killed the unkillable plant? Plants are a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous game to play. Because, like, I'm used to flower gardening. Right. That's what I started off with. I'm upgrading to vegetable gardening. But I started a potato. Nice. Um. So there's a potato growing in my house. And... Apparently, what you're supposed to do is like let the vines and flowers and everything just do go. their thing. Yeah. And then once they die, apparently that's when you can pluck the potato and eat it. Nice. So I'm starting there. That's where I'm starting with vegetables. I would not grow vegetables myself because I'm pretty sure somehow, some <laughs> way, I would make them poisonous. <laughs> Just, just, just plants by existing are in my apartment, man. Because not, not, not all plants are uh, the same. I did really good with this for a while, and then I think it just baked in the sun, uh, which is funny to say that a plant baked in the sun. Yeah. Uh, but I think it just got too hot in my in my studio at home. Um, I've only ever had one plant. <laughs> this, is, this is awful, but I'm going to tell it. I've only ever had one plant that I watered that uh, did not die. Um <laughs> My roommate at the time was living in Oklahoma. He had it in his house. It was his plant. Um, And I took care of it like it was my own. I was just like, I'm going to take care of this thing, you know, and moved it around in the light and everything, made sure it was all good. Uh, One day he caught me watering it and he goes, what are you doing? I was like, I'm watering your plant, man. I've been doing this, you know, since you guys moved in. He goes, that thing's plastic. (laughs) That's one plant you can't kill. That was six months after I'd moved in with him. I had been watering a plastic plant for six months. <laughs> okay, maybe you aren't a plant guy. No. <laughs> and one day I want to get a dog. Is that is that's that's probably a bad thing, right? I did pretty good with Scarlet. She was yes. fine. Yeah. That, try try the dog. Try plants are different than dogs. I don't this this just in. I can't take plants for walks. That's the that's the difference. I think you know. Right. Hey, at least we know. At least you know if you get a pet, you won't be starving it from water. <laughs> it's gonna be well watered. That's for one zero seven seven RKR. It is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball and Mark Frankhouse. So there's a growing trend in uh, some states. At least four of them now have this: an ammunition vending machine. Have mm. you heard of these? No. So it started in uh, Alabama, I believe, was the first state that did this. Oklahoma was next, and I believe Texas. And Colorado 
are now getting these automatic vending machines that dispense ammunition for guns. These are going in grocery stores. These are going in convenience stores. And it is literally exactly what you think it is. It's a vending machine that you walk up to, put your ID and info into, pick your ammo, push, pay, and boom. You Not pun intended there. Uh, you get ammunition and, out the bottom of a vending machine. And boom, meatball. I didn't mean it. I swear I didn't mean it. It just, that's what I, I say, and boom. Boom goes the the gun. Um, the, this is wild. <laughs> I am not surprised by the state names you've rattled off. Well, no, I wasn't today. either. <laughs> you know, Colorado might be the only state there that's, that's uh, you know, leaning on, on a lib more liberal side. But, like, Colorado also has a very healthy gun population. There right. are lots and lots of hunting available, too. But these machines are literally, it's like... I would liken them to uh, like what Redbox used to be. You walk up, you touch the screen and ask you if you want rifle, handgun or shotgun rounds. You pick and then it gives you a menu of everything that's in the machine and I, you just pick it and go. Huh. And this company, uh, I think they're called American Rounds. They're wanting to put them all over the place. They want to, they want to like, uh, this is, I don't want to say it's insane, but it's like, it's just crazy to think that like, you can literally walk into a convenience store, no checking, no background, no nothing, and just put your card in a machine and get ammunition for a gun. <laughs> it's just weird when, like, bullets need the same accessibility as, like, a, a refreshing beverage. Yeah, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, I'm thirsty. I gotta, like, I'm never like, oh, man, I gotta, I gotta get some bullets. Yeah. Like, yeah. it, it, that is so unnecessary. Like, uh, I'm, I'm going to run down to the uh, the corner store. I'm going to run down to the party store. I got to get me, uh, you know, <laughs> Fago Red Pop and shotgun shells. Like, that's, oh, boy. Putting putting one of these in a party store, would I think that would be detrimental. Uh, <laughs> in the area, jeez, man. One well, little know. part of it. This is this is something that I think is definitely going to be growing in in a lot of states, and I'm sure there's, I, by all accounts, they're all legal, and the identifying process like uses AI to determine whether the person is who they say they are and they're old enough because you have to put your ID oh, yeah, into the I, machine. AI is so reliable, right? Have you seen how many fingers it puts on? Like AI can't identify people. It's awful. AI is awful. People are so scared of it. And I'm just like, bro, have you seen what it tries to do when it, like you tell it to make real people? Yeah. That's not, that's not a problem. It's not an issue. But this, I don't know. I'm a little concerned with this one, man. Uh, good Lord. I will say there's, there's more info on this over on the Rocker app. Um, I can almost guarantee you it's going to be popping up in other states. It probably will end up in like Ohio and Indiana, maybe Michigan. I, you don't know. You just genuinely don't know with this kind of stuff, you know, it's crazy. I did have to laugh, though. The uh, the video that ABC News put together on these things um, and I'm I'm genuinely not making this up. The vending machine right next to where they put the ammo uh, vending machine was for bang energy drinks. These people have zero chill. For <laughs> It's time to turn up your dials and tune out the traffic because we're playing The Daily Five on the Rocker Morning Show. Testing the mental magnitude of your favorite morning monkeys on the radio. And now, your hosts for The Daily Five, Meatball and Mark Frank House. It is the Daily Five where Mark and I ask each other questions. The other one answers. Today, I'm asking the questions. Mark is answering. Mark, you got some help on the line from our good buddy, Zach. Good morning, Zach. How are you? Hey, morning. Good, you? We are doing great, man. You got to help me get three out of five correct. I'm looking for my first point for the week. Meepo looking for his fourth point of the week. And I feel good about it. All right, let's go. Question number one, this has to do with entertainment. In the movie Coming to America... How many characters did Eddie Murphy play? Was it three, four, or five? That's a tough one. <laughs> mm. 
Honestly, I haven't seen it in a while. Do you remember offhand, like, some of the characters, like, which ones he played? Uh, yeah, kind of. I, I I, mean, obviously, like, him as the, the main character. As the prince. Uh, he played the singer. I wanna... He played an old man. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think it's only three. Think only three? I think it's only three. That that feels reasonable. I, I don't think it was quite to the, you know, Tyler Perry level of <laughs> right. play yeah. everybody. Yeah, I think it's three. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. But if you're cool with it, Zach, I'll say three. Yeah, let's go for it. Three final answer. Three final answer. No, it was actually four. You got Prince Hakeem. You got Clarence the Barber. No, you didn't get Clarence the Barber. No, he's the old guy. You got the old white guy in the barber oh, shop. You got the singer. But yeah, he played one yeah. of the other barbers in the barber shop. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, Arsenio Hall also played four characters in that movie, too. Jeez. <laughs> All right, question number two. This is food. What flavor was the first ever lifesaver? Was it pineapple? Peppermint or cherry? I think peppermint. I, don't, uh, I was leaning towards that, but also, and I, I don't have a good reason for it, but I just have cherry in my head. Yeah. Something. Yeah. <laughs> um, cherry was like the first thing that popped into my head um, before any answers came out. I think um, that's the most common for sure. Yeah. We don't need your input here. <laughs> Um, men are talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zach, what do we want to do? We want to get thrown off by meatball and switch our answer to cherry, or do we want to uh, stay with peppermint, which he definitely does not want us to do? <laughs> oh, man. I just feel like, uh, you know, the peppermint being the, the more, like, hard and chalky one, so it wasn't, like, the, the more candy one, mm. I don't know. That's that's tough. I I I'm inclined for cherry at the moment. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna run with you, Zach. I'll agree with you, and we'll say cherry. Final answer. Cherry. Final answer. It was peppermint. Yep, knew it. In ah. fact, it was originally called pep o mint because it was shaped like an O. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> Gotta run the table here. Question number three. This is history. If the light on top of the Big Ben clock tower in London is lit, what does that mean? Does it mean that Parliament is in session, the king or queen is present, or a member of the royal family has died? We're in America, Meatball. <laughs> We're not a bunch of redcoats around here, you know? We don't know this stuff. Yeah, that's a tough one. God. I mean, based on just, uh, I don't know, other... Similar things, like for example, like in the military, they'll they'll post up a, a flag for if a higher ranking general is on base. So oh, yeah. kind of inclined to think it would be something a little more simple like that, of like, oh hey, you know, yeah, the queen is here. Let's give it a shot. We got nothing to lose. We already lost the point for the week, so it's <laughs> and yeah, meatballs just Mark, loving himself so defeated, over here. Defeated, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, the the king or queen or whatever is present. The king or queen is present. Final answer. No, it means the parliament is in session. Big Ben is actually, you know, the clock tower is attached to parliament there. Ah, okay. In London. Cool. So, yep, that's what well, that means. We didn't get the point for the Thursday, so Meatball gets a fourth point for the week. And congratulations to Zach. You have won a pair of tickets to see Artemis Pile at Warner Vineyards this Saturday, man. It's going to be a great show. Awesome. Thank you very much. I, I want to celebrate, but Mark's making me feel bad for. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Getting my point today. 1077 RKR, it is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. I know it's only like 745 in the morning, Mark, but we're going to talk about food here. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm actually kind of hungry. Uh, Matt, well, that's the problem is I'm hungry and we won't be able to go get food for another like <laughs> two hours or so. Uh, Mashed has put out a new survey for the best pepperoni pizzas in the entire country. Ooh. Can hmm. you guess who got the best pepperoni pizza in the entire country? I'll give you a hint. 
It is a Michigan-based company. Okay. I know I'll catch some heat for this. Uh -huh. um, personally. Little Caesars. I, I love Little Caesars. Yep, yep. I, however, am going to go with the one that more people talk about. I've had it, but after having it all the time at my first radio job, I I like it. It's good, but it's not my favorite. Buddies. Buddies was my thought as well. Yeah. I thought it was going to be Buddies. It is it, not. Okay. What are it they is a Detroit style pizza though. Jets? Jets. Okay. See, Jets slaps super hard. Yeah. Which I had that never had Jets until I, I didn't had Jets until I moved here. Oh. I think you were the one that suggested it to me first because well, there's one right down the road from us here. Yes, dangerously enough. And and I unfortunately have not been there in a hot minute. Uh, so yeah, apparently Jets has the best pepperoni pizza in the entire country, like Man. the nation. This was this was voted on by a bunch of people that took part in this survey for Mashed. This is what they said. Many customers seem to love Jets Detroit-style pizzas with or without pepperoni, even, um, for their crust. The toppings span edge mm. to edge, uh, but the dough beneath is chewy. It ends at a crispy rim uh, with an almost caramelized touch. Now, on to the most important element, the pepperoni. Pepperoni on top of Detroit-style crust is a match made in heaven. When ordering pepperoni from Jets, just be aware of this uh, this one little thing. Regular pepperoni and bold cupped pepperoni. Mm. That is what is up. The regular pepperoni, obviously flat and large, lightly tossed with the cheese, touch of layering. The bold cupped pepperoni, more of a kick, small pool of grease that builds up on the inside of that, you know? It is good. Oh, yeah. It is good. It's, it's definitely in my top five. Yeah. So, like, what would you say your top five pepperoni pizzas are? Well, plain pepperoni pizzas? Yeah, just pepperoni pizzas. Um, I mean, you could do cupped pepperoni, like like somebody who's got like an ultimate pepperoni. Yeah. Team. In no particular order, Little Caesars. Okay. Jets. BC. Yep. Um, man. See, there are places who I love their pizza, but I've always gone overboard and got something just not sure. straight pepperoni. Sure. So... But yeah, I would say Jets, BC, Little Caesars, Urbelli's is really good too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, that is a tough one. Where would my fifth one be? I'll tell oh, you. Oh, you know what? Hungry Howie's. Easily. Oh, yeah. Hungry Howie's. Oh, my is good. gosh. Yeah. That's another good one. We have such good pizza in Michigan. It's any, stupid. Any place that offers like the ultimate pepperoni pizzas that has like just, they just cake the pizza yeah. in pepperonis with all of the different types and stuff. Chris. If, yeah, from BC. If you're listening, just saying, <clears throat> we need a thing today. Yeah, you're gonna be in the you're gonna be in the the office tomorrow. Just saying, we need you to make a extra I think, special delivery. I, I think I'm with you. I think <laughs> my my top pepperoni pizzas are gonna be Jets. I don't know if I put them in number one, but they're they're definitely top five. Mm -hmm. uh, Buddies is just a revelation to me since I moved here. Uh, I don't know if I would put Little Caesars up there. BC Pizza, his Chris's ultimate pepperoni is there. I got to tell you, though, like just a straight up extra pepperoni pizza stuffed crust from Pizza Hut. Mm -hmm. I know it's like very, very state or whatever, but like I love it. Give us a call at 978-1077. What is the best just straight up plain pepperoni pizza that you've ever had? Whether it's in the state, out of the state, I don't give a crap. It could be a chain. Let it could be know. like a local spot, whatever. Because toppings do change oh. the, the the palate, obviously. But let us know where the best pepperoni pizza is. Thanks, Meatball. Now I know what I'm having for lunch while I just started this diet. Dude, I'm, I'm legit already. I'm already <laughs> dreaming about walking down the street going to Jets to get pizza today. You know I have no self-control. <laughs> 1077 RKR. It's a rocker morning show with Mark Frankhouse. And Meatball. We talked about, we talk a lot about U of M. We don't really talk about Michigan State a whole lot because we don't really have really many Sparties that work for RKR. We do have some Spartans in the building, however. Right, right. So it's only fair that we give them a little love because somebody in Kalamazoo is selling a major piece of Michigan State Spartan history. If you open up the 1077 RKR app, you can see this listing. It's on Facebook. Somebody in Kalamazoo has a, the scoring table to the Breslin Center. 
It's two. <laughs> it's two sectional tables. Okay. They co- they connect into one, uh, but he's got the full thing up for sale for thirty five hundred bucks. Um, Whoa. And you can you can own this piece of Spartan history. It's literally right here in Kalamazoo. Um, it's one table. Uh, and four, it's like one table's in, in four corners. So there's two of them. Okay. Uh, and they're just like rectangular scorer tables. They were used at the Breslin Center at MSU. Uh, they're custom built. They've got LED panels, connectors, wirings, uh, still with the station stickers oh, from its cool. uh, MSU service days. That's cool. This was used for about 10 years, apparently, from 2011 till about the beginning of the pandemic, 2020, 2021. Okay. Um. And I mean, this would be, I mean, if you're a diehard Sparty fan, like, can you imagine this in your man cave or your Sparty cave? Just turn this into your bar. Like, Seriously. Turn this into your bar in your man cave. Like, we know what school I affiliate with. Sure. But I don't care. This is really cool. Let's put that in there and then the display on the front, you just put U of M, you know, display. That would be front. a slap in the face. <laughs> That would be a real mean thing Tom, to do. Tom Izzo would literally feel that in his soul in that very moment. He'd be sliding into my DMs like, you are a jerk. <laughs> no, there's. I know cool. there's a lot of diehard Spartan fans out there. So if this is, this is something like when Tiger Stadium went down and they were selling the seats, same with Joe Louis Arena. Yeah. Those seats are kind of a collector's item. Yeah, but there the were like last, thousands of those. And there's the last remaining relics of... These, you know, arenas. Now, Breslin Center, obviously, is still here. But this is still a major part of the school. And I, like I said, if you're a Spartan fan, man, this is nuts. My next question is, you know, this person has this scoring table. I'm like, all right, this is really cool. This will look great in my man cave. How did you come across this? Me? How, no, not you. Oh, okay. Not you. Him, ah. the person. Like, yeah. how, so how, how did you end up with, how did this person end up with the scoring table for Michigan State basketball? My uncle Tom gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, really? What? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my fellow U of M fans, but if you're a Spartan, you could get this into your house and just hook it up on the LED Wolverine suck. <laughs> that could be the Our- ultimate slap in the face. <laughs> I will never give you permission to do that again. <laughs> I'm giving you one pass. This right. is it. Take uh, it. Uh, 1077 RKR. It's a Rocket Morning Show with Mark Frank House. And Meatball. But tell you what, man, I've been going up north my entire life. I've been traveling through the middle, the left, the right side of the state. And I have never heard of this 90-year-old diner. It's called the White House Diner Restaurant. Okay. It's in Clare, Michigan. It's literally in the middle of the Lower Peninsula. Like just right in the middle of your palm. Yeah. Okay. It's like northeast of Grand Rapids, basically. I got you. Okay. Uh, this place has been around for 90 years. That's super impressive. But apparently this place has like the best cheeseburgers in the state. Like so many people have claimed that this place has the burgers that you have to go to. And on top of that, they got a smoker out there. So they get like (sighs) beer brats, Kegel dogs. They've got pulled pork. I mean, you, you hit me up with the food earlier. Now I'm hitting you up with the food. Man... I've already committed myself to Jets ha! for lunch, so I think I'm going to have to do burgers for dinner, I guess. The, okay, 90 years old? Yeah, they, they established in 1935. I have to imagine a place that has been around for 90 years is definitely going to have the best burgers because it, it's not a chain. And, and you know, some of these chain places are around for 100 years or whatever because they just, you know, monopolized, basically. They right. just capitalized and grew uh, for, like, that reason. If you've got a little spot like this that sticks around for 90 years, like, there's a reason, especially in a small town like Claire, there's a reason they're sticking around, and it's because people are driving to get that food, man. The wild thing is, is like for as big of a place as this is, yeah, it's very, very tiny. Actually, it looks very, very small. There, there is. They have a massive menu, man. I mean, like French fries and fried appetizers, burgers, sandwiches. They got dinner specials, dogs, Rubens. They've got oh. homemade soups and salads. Why they even do like breakfast? They have like they they have two pages. Completely dedicated to breakfast. Dude. This is nuts, man. I've never, I can't believe I've never heard about this. Here's the deal. When it comes to good burgers, Mm -hmm. if they've got a sign 
outside that's super old and retro, and it just says, open hamburgers, you know you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident in that. Like, you don't, you can't just be a small locally owned business for 90 years without having to sell some banger food. Yeah. This is one of those places that like you can probably smell it down the street and it is just like the most heavenly smell mm. you'll ever experience. You start doing like what cartoon characters do when they smell a pie on a windowsill and like the, the little scent cloud goes in your nose and your yep. feet pick up and you start floating toward this place. Man, I'm telling you, take a look at some of this food. It's up here on the 1077 RKR mm. app. Let me know, have you ever been here, 978-1077? It's the White House Restaurant in Clare, Michigan. Let me know if you've ever been here before, because I think the next time we go up north, I think I'm going to have to pop by here, man. This place looks insane good. I think the next time I have half a day off, I'm just going to drive to Clare's and get a burger. You know, I've never driven three hours to, well, it's about two hours, I'd say. So you're going to have to have some dedication. Well, it's four hours round trip, even on top of that. So exactly full tank of gas just for a burger. I'm down for that. 1077 RKR it is the Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. Hey, I'm Mark Frankhouse. The Critchlow Alligator Sanctuary has a new resident, Mark. And is it a gator? It is a gator. Very nice. Uh, well, not exactly. Police or authorities, rather, in Detroit, Michigan, did a welfare check on an individual that uh, people hadn't seen or heard from in a couple of weeks. Went to the home, opened the door, and found that uh, the person had been deceased. Oh, no. Uh, for quite some time. Because of the gator? No, no. Actually, um, they they got into the home and found that the the person had been deceased for a couple of weeks, and they found a four-foot alligator. Oh, my gosh. And a dog uh, that had just not been fed in a couple of weeks. You know, hats off to that gator. I mean, first off, rest in peace, random guy. But yeah. hats off to that gator. Because, for, listen. For, for re exercising control and restraint. I Listen. <laughs> so they must have been, like, auditioning for a Disney movie here. <laughs> because I know how alligators work. They don't need to eat all the time. But if I hadn't eaten in three weeks. Yeah. And I had a big St. Bernard hanging out in me, I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Well, even if it was just like a tiny <laughs> little dog, like I don't I'm know kidding. what they didn't identify what kind of dog it was. Uh, they didn't. They didn't really give a ton of details, but yeah. As an alligator, though, that's some restraint, man. Just a dog, like it reminds me of like in Finding Nemo, the sharks <laughs> that you know, fish are friends, not yeah. food. <laughs> like owner is friend, not food. That dog must have been sweating bullets, though. <laughs> like I know I'm starving. I know he's starving. <laughs> I'm in deep crap. <laughs> the dog's just sitting there, like. Just staring at the wall, just giving the alligator side eye like the whole time. <laughs> Dogs like trying to communicate mentally. You know what I love? Friendship between species. Man, I'll bet that pillow tastes really good. You should try. 1077 RKR, it is the Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. One of the, I believe he got the nod. Is Dave Matthews going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year? Ah, uh, something I, like that. It was yeah. a second time nominee. He technically got the vote the first time. And then they said, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. I th I, he's at least a nominee. He might be getting in. I can't remember this year. I, I start, stopped really keeping in touch with that. Uh, but one of the reasons people might be hesitant to uh, let him in is because of an incident that happened uh, in Chicago a while back. In fact, we're approaching the anniversary here. August 8th, 2004. I think I reminded you of this the other day. Are you aware of the Dave Matthews Band Chicago River incident? Please. On Please educate people on this. On August 8, 2004, a <laughs> tour bus belonging to the Dave Matthews Band dumped an estimated 800 pounds of human waste <laughs> from the bus's black water uh. tank through the Kinsey Street Bridge in Chicago. So threw the grate on it. They intended for it to just go into the river. But <laughs> there happened to be an open top passenger sightseeing boat <laughs> sailing in the Chicago River right uh. below them. <laughs> there was a 2005 legal settlement. The band agreed to pay $200,000 to the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, Ouch. And other projects. The band also donated $100,000 to two groups that protect the river and the surrounding area. Band's bus driver, 
uh, pled guilty to dumping the waste in April of 2005. Oh. Notice there, though, the only entities to get any money out of this incident were, you know, protection agencies for the river and wildlife and whatnot. Yeah. Not the 30 or 40 some people on the open top river tour boat. Yep. That got 800 pounds of poo dropped on them. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> beautiful is not the word I would have used. There. I would have at least liked some kind of, I would have liked at least like some kind of compensation. Yeah. Even, even if it's just like a bumper sticker, you know, well, like I got crapped on by Dave Matthews band and all I got was, Crapped on by the Dave Matthews band. There's, there actually are bumper stickers that somebody in Chicago is selling. Oh gosh, <laughs> they say I survived Dave Matthews band Poopgate 2004. <laughs> uh, I believe the person selling them is called Bumpin Dot Uglies on Instagram. Oh, beautiful! It's literally a brown and yellow bumper sticker, and they stuck one on the railing of the bridge where it happened. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I hope one day there's a uh, a state marker there. <laughs> In fact, I think you can petition. I think I'm going to do that. I'm not even from there, and I want to see that. <laughs>